In a move that shocked everyone in the international community, Italy forged ties with China by becoming the first G7 nation to officially endorse China's ambitious Belt and Road Initiative, BRI. It was a significant departure from the common sentiment among Western nations, quite literally. The West is generally skeptical of China's expanding influence, especially now at their own doorstep, Italy. However, fast forward to the present day, Italy seems to be recalibrating its stance. Discussions about an exit from the BRI are gaining huge traction. In 2019, during Chinese President Xi Jinping's visit to Rome, Italy shocked the United States and Europe by becoming the first G7 country to join China's Belt and Road Initiative, BRI, the largest ever global infrastructure undertaking. Under the leadership of Prime Minister Giuseppe Conti, Italy signed a memorandum of understanding with China that formalized its participation in the BRI. At that time, the decision was seen as strategic. Italy needed to enhance economic ties, attract investments, and strengthen its position in global trade. The agreement included provisions for cooperation in infrastructure development, trade facilitation, and cultural exchange. As expected, the initial enthusiasm, however, elicited a mixed reaction both domestically and internationally. Supporters of the cause saw economic gains in Italy partnering with China's infrastructure projects, while critics warned of geopolitical risks in aligning too closely with Beijing. A section of European countries and the United States viewed Italy's decision as a potential crack in the united front against China's growing influence. Today, Italy seems to have changed its tune. The nation is reconsidering its involvement in the Belt and Road Initiative, BRI. The five-year memorandum of understanding between China and Italy, signed in 2019, is set for renewal in March 2024. It is expected that Italy might distance itself from the initiative, citing unmet promises and conducting a strategic reassessment of its relationship with China. But what led Italy, a high-income nation with the prowess to develop its own cutting-edge infrastructure, to succumb to the allure of the BRI in the first place? It's a valid question. Italy, grappling with three recessions in a mere decade, had to seek a lifeline. Keen to attract investment and expand its export opportunities into China's vast market, Italy faced a decisive moment. Sensing a lack of support from Europe and harboring skepticism towards the European Union, Italy's populist government enthusiastically embraced China for investment. Italy had to make a move. It utilized its political influence and officially joined the Belt and Road Initiative, BRI. Italy's intentions were to surpass its European counterpart in the competition for Chinese attention and investments. And that's where President Xi saw an opportunity. Xi's courtship of Italy was strategic, aiming to anchor the Belt and Road Initiative to the historical Silk Road glory, painting a picture of Chinese prosperity and influence. Italy, with its crucial Silk Road connection and the largest Chinese population in Europe, became a pawn in Xi's game to amplify China's sway in the continent. The ties ran deep, encompassing trade linkages in fabrics and leather goods. However, many European leaders perceived the BRI as a potential wedge in the European Union that would create divisions between Washington and Brussels, with Italy as a vulnerable target. As the alleged harsh reality of the Belt and Road Initiative's unfulfilled promises set in, Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney has boldly declared that joining the BRI was a big mistake and insists that this misstep could be rectified by a swift withdrawal from the initiative. She highlighted the glaring lack of benefits accruing to Italy, emphasizing, Italy is the only G7 member that signed up to the Silk Road, but it is not the European or Western country with the strongest economic relations and trade flows with China. To make matters worse, Italian Defense Minister Guido Crosetto labeled Italy's decision to join the BRI as an improvised and atrocious act. However, this departure from the norm raised eyebrows. Defense ministers on most occasions typically steer clear of economic critiques. The BRI, a regional economic cooperation framework, clearly doesn't fall within the purview of national defense. Crosetto's critique seemed out of place, prompting questions about the appropriateness of his stance. Examining Crosetto's statements, it becomes evident that they clash with the facts. 
While he claimed the BRI disproportionately boosted China's exports to Italy, the figures tell a different story. Over four years, bilateral trade between China and Italy has soared by nearly 42%, reaching nearly $78 billion last year. Italy's exports to China increased by 42% from 2019 to 2021, with a significant 58% surge in the first five months of the current year. These statistics undeniably contradict Crozetto's narrative and reflect the substantial impact of the BRI. Yet this seeming inconsistency isn't peculiar in today's political scene in America and Europe. In the recent past, we have severally seen security and defense officials adopting a more radical stance when it comes to economic cooperation with China. Curiously, those in charge of the economy typically incline toward a more moderate tone. Crozetto's unorthodox commentary stands as the latest example of how security concerns are stretched to the limit in the West. Fresh from her meeting with U.S. President Joe Biden, Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney dropped a bombshell. The Italian government would decide on the Belt and Road Initiative, BRI, before December of this year. She declared that she would not favor Chinese expansion into Italy or Europe, but quickly asserted her commitment to maintaining open lines with Beijing. This clearly indicates Italy's current dilemma. It wants Washington's political recognition, but it is unwilling to give up economic cooperation with China, and it does not want to pick just one. But what prompted the Prime Minister to shift her tone after she visited the U.S.? The current trend in the United States revolves around a pervasive inclination to criticize anything and everything about China. It's more than just a narrative. It's a perilous game, though a game nonetheless. Irrespective of China's positive endeavors, Washington appears committed to a narrative of constant censure. What's unfolding for Italy isn't merely an internal deliberation. It's the external pressure exerted by the United States a blatant push for Italy to disengage from the Belt and Road Initiative. This isn't about the initiative being detrimental to Italy. It's a calculated move by the US, an integral part of its geopolitical maneuvers. No doubt China's colossal success has the US on edge. In Washington, they've been scratching their heads, trying to figure out how to put a damper on China's rise. See, the thing is, the mindset in the US is all about needing to be number one, not just successful. And let's face it, grabbing that top position becomes quite a challenge, especially when China is already a successful nation. In this elaborate scenario, it becomes apparent why China's trade is experiencing a slowdown. The United States is strategically erecting barriers, not only within its borders, but also actively encouraging Europe to follow suit. The current challenging situation faced by Italy seems to have a clear culprit. Ever since Italy decided to join the BRI in 2019, the United States has applied considerable pressure, almost branding Italy as a traitor of the West. During that period, the New York Times labeled Italy as a Trojan horse. This description implied that Italy was enabling China's economic expansion to reach deep into the heart of Europe. The West anticipates potential consequences that go beyond the economic sphere. If unchecked, the Chinese could extend their influence into the military and political realms of Europe. Following a change in the Italian government, Washington seized the opportunity to escalate its pressure tactics. In the lead-up to Maloney's visit to the U.S., John Kirby, the director of strategic communications for the National Security Council at the time, took a trip to Italy. His purpose was to educate the leadership of Italy about what he perceived as the lack of rewards tied to economic partnerships with China. In doing so, Kirby actively portrayed the U.S. as a credible alternative. The message was clear. The U.S. saw itself as a more advantageous partner in the economic scene. This is an intriguing scene indeed. While the U.S. and the West emphasize vigilance against the BRI, they've launched their own imitations, like the G7's Partnership for Global Infrastructure and Investment and the European Union's Global Gateway Initiative. This dual approach of learning from and imitating the BRI while simultaneously suppressing and smearing it underscores the BRI's long-term vision and alignment with the prevailing global trend. For sure, Italy has experienced significant improvement in its status in China's foreign relations. However, 
The decision to join the BRI has become complex when mixed with geopolitics and U.S. pressure. The hope is for Italy to make a rational decision independently, testing its political wisdom and diplomatic autonomy. In light of these considerations, China is not sitting idly. The Chinese government recognizes the strategic importance of Italy within the EU and is actively working to address concerns and keep Italy within the BRI fold. Efforts include diplomatic engagements, economic incentives, and reassurances about the mutual benefits of continued collaboration.